that there is a uh, very little left in there i mean well there's enough to do maybe four or five more buckets maybe more than that but i've done about 300 buckets or so with one bag so 86 bucks y'all try doing that with perlite not gonna happen but there she is i am going to put the feed lines in i've got this quarter inch feed tube that'll go from here to the with a spike to the rice holes and where the tomatoes are going to go i'm going to put the tomatoes in first then we'll put the spikes in the feed lines i put the feed lines i'm gonna hook all the feed lines in here tomorrow and i'm going to do a test run with that pump down there uh hope for the best because i've never even run that pump i just bought that pump um about a month ago off craigslist that's a big mama jama but it's pumping to 300 some odd buckets the way this is going to work I have a auto fill system here with a float valve about right about there. It's, it's going to keep water that deep all the time. If something happens and it leaks, it's still going to, it's just going to keep filling that way. It's going to keep pumping, but, uh, that thing will never run dry. Anyway, the water or the nutrients will come out of there into this and feed into this tube here all the way down and that'll fill all four rows down each one of these inch and a half or i'm sorry that's inch and a quarter inch and a quarter feed lines all the way down and every 10 feet i have it coming up to to my feeder tubes with a uh, an adjustable val ball valve on it so i can adjust how much is going in so it doesn't overflow me down here on this return that was what I was worried about and I want to be able to adjust that at each one of the you know if you do it every 10 you can pretty much get an even flow out of all 10 if you ran that thing 20 feet you'd get a lot more at one end than you would the other it would start tapering off as you went down so every 10 feet it works it's the same way I got it set up in the lettuce house but anyway also I've I've got a um, a relief system here because it's going to be pushing so hard into this tube. I've got an over uh, pressure, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's going to relieve some of the pressure by sending it right back into this tank. Plus it'll aerate that tank and the nutrients. But uh, here's my sump. My return comes down to a sump and that pump when it fills up, will pump right back into this as well. I'm going to have some kind of a filter on here because there are no filters in these Dutch buckets. I have no strainers. So what does make it back, and I, I've done a test and nothing came back, but um, that was just with one bucket. So whatever does come back is going to hit a strainer in here and keep it from hitting that pump. Well, there you go. That is what we have so far. It is... Well, tomorrow is April Fool's Day. It's the last day of March, so tomorrow is April Fool's Day. And we hope not to have any strange things happen in here. All right, tubers, I do not know how much of any of the stuff that I keep filming is going to end up in a video because business is getting in the way of growing a new business is getting in the way of YouTube and to be honest with you, I don't make that much from YouTube, so uh, I told Randy, my buddy, um, Crossbow, that YouTube is probably taking a back seat, and it is, um, but I will try and catch you up whenever I can on what's going on here, so if this makes it in there, yeah, so be it. I'll give you an update real quick on what I'm doing here, so let me turn this camera around and I'll be right back. All right, I hope you can hear this over the rain because that's what it does here in Memphis. It just rains all the time. I, I know it's all, happening a lot up in the upper Midwest too. They're having more problems than we are with flooding and 
the farmers are going to have a tough time this year getting out in the fields because it is so wet and you can see i have diverted water away from my greenhouse because i don't want it coming in here but uh, i've dug a little irrigation path for it or uh whatever you call them trench to get the water out and away from the greenhouse but that's not what i'm doing this video on and i first had started doing this um using ball valves to restrict the flow and to kind of make sure that i have plenty of flow all the way to the end of each of these runs and i just had it open i'm just going to let it run well, what has happened is by the time the the water goes back no matter how i adjust these valves by the time it gets back to um the sump it has overrun my returns and let me just show you down here let me just take a walk this has got about a foot to a foot in a half drop from this end back here all the way to here you hear my sump just kicked on by the time it gets back around here it is overflowing and coming out here so i had to restrict it even more so these ball valves are really not going to play a whole huge part in the design so don't waste your money on that uh, at least not to this point i don't think we'll see how this works i have purchased these emitters these are one half gallon per hour emitters they actually let a little more than that through uh, depending on the pressure and i can adjust that from these valves but the reason i'm having to go to those emitters is because if i turn the valve down far enough that it doesn't overrun the return i'm not getting enough at the distal end which is the far end to actually even have the water come out or the nutrient come out so i'm gonna open these valves up put these emitters on and we're going to run this thing probably i'm not going to run it every uh, uh 24 7 either i'm going to have it run probably three to five minutes every 30 minutes and we'll see how that goes but that's where i am these uh emitters are they're not real pricey excuse me i bought a thousand of them but they come in these packs of 50 and uh i forgot how much they were but they're not too bad it just i just really didn't want to have to do that because my hands are really sore i've got arthritis in them and shoving those on the end of every one of these feed lines is not fun that's where we are i know this is going to make money um it's just like the lettuce system they say if you create a good product you can make some money just like uh, I heard them say if you can make a dollar uh, on every coke machine the way you make a million dollars is to buy a million coke machines so if I can make a dollar on each one of these things every week um, each bucket get you a million buckets you're a millionaire there you are hope this makes it into a video can't promise anything we'll see you next time so one of the things you have to realize when you're building a hydroponics system this large is what it's going to do to you if you have arthritis and i've got some pretty significant arthritis in my hands it's i'm sure it could be a lot worse i just deal with a lot of arthritis problems in my hands so if you're dealing with this you might want to consider it before you get into involved in this or hire somebody to do it a lot of the things that we have to do with a hydroponics and an aquaponics system is um, has to deal with compression fittings which means this 
seals up based on a compression factor. That grommet is pressed into this three quarter inch PVC and then into that one quarter inch feed lines or some people call them spaghetti lines fit into the grommet and the pressure from uh, the pressure that this the diameter of this tubing puts on that grommet is what seals it all up it put it pushes the grommet out against the tubing and this has got pressure against that grommet and that seals that up and that's I have yet to see one of these things leak so they're they're really good if you do it right if you use the right bit for that grommet the same goes for these uh, emitters that barbed um, spike there that comes out of the emitter is going to go into this uh, one quarter inch tubing and it's really not that easy to put these in there especially if you got bad hands uh, in, with um, arthritis or maybe a, uh, an injured hand you just have to be careful because this is going to put a lot of pressure on your hands and your fingers the way that I found the best way to do it is to put that into the uh, end of this tubing and start wiggling it back and forth putting applying a little pressure and eventually you got that that's good enough once you get that you're set and I'm um, I was I drilled a hole in the top of each one of these buckets let me see if I can angle this down so where you can see it the top of this bucket here the way that I'm holding this feed line in the proper place is I've drilled a hole in the side of this bucket and I'm using these little zip ties to create something to hold this in place really I just need it to be somewhere near the middle and that's going to do it that way I can also at the end of the season pull all this out dump that um, bucket of rice holes and get some new stuff that's the plan anyway we just have to do that right there several hundred more times I've already done all these and now I've got to do the rest of these well you live and you learn I've uh, wasted a little money here but it's not the first time every time I try something uh, there's a learning curve this particular kind of emitter is not good for this system it clogs way too easy so i've purchased some that i can clean out and adjust since i'm not using um strainers some debris does get through uh, i have strainers down here and i can show you that um ongoing but these emitters are better they allow more water to go through and it's it's a lot easier to adjust um, the amount for the flow rate and you can see that this is about what I want that does not overrun my returns like it did when it was fully open um, when it was fully opened and I didn't have emitters on it it would overrun down about two-thirds the way down maybe a little further than that it would overrun this uh, return pipe but right now we're good I'm replacing the rest of these at uh, well it's not a significant expense but when you start multiplying it by 400 or whatever it uh it can run into some money thought i'd give you a quick update on that if you're using my system use these emitters to show you the difference in these emitters and what kind of flow rate i'm getting from these two sides here that i've completed i've changed the emitters on that these are the old ones that one's even backwards. I turned it around because it got clogged. Uh, but these are the old emitters on these two sides. And if you follow this down, 
You see that one comes this way, this return, and this one goes this way. Look at the difference in what I'm getting out of each of those pipes. Now these, the ones on this side, uh, not going to cut it. This is what I want. You see that this is the feed line, the one and a quarter inch is the supply and it supplies all the way up to a ball valve and it comes to a three quarter with all these top hats that I explained earlier. Now this is the feed tubes and you see the nutrient coming out. It's feeding the plant in the bucket. Well the bucket has the uh, half inch tubing. This cat is driving me crazy. Oh Ryan go away. Anyway, just starve for attention. That's the return. It goes from back from the buckets into the, the gray pipe, which is my return. You can see it's just, all four of them come right back here and it's all just pouring into this sump. And in there is a sump pump. That is a three quarter horse sump pump that is constantly, almost constantly running because it fills up that 20 gallon tote or 30 gallon really quick. And you'll watch it, it'll rise, and then it'll kick on in just a second. There it goes, it's kicking on. I'm sorry guys, I'm getting bumped around by this cat. He is not cooperating and I... He tried to climb on my greenhouse while I was when I locked him out. Anyway, you see the how it works. It's pumping it right back up into this reservoir. That is a one horse pool pump. The one horse, that's a big mama jama. Now when you're supplying this many pots, over 300 pots, or buckets, whatever you want to call them, you're gonna have to have something with some giddy up, and that's got some giddy up. It's feeding all this supply line here. And it all cycles back through the gray line into the sump. The big closed loop system. This is how it goes. It's being fed. Let me see if I can show you that from the bottom there. And for those of you that were asking too, let me show you this. It's a little harder to see. So bear with me. Some of you were asking if I used paint strainers. I used one, one paint strainer. And it is from the sump. It's where the sump returns and any debris is getting caught in that before it hits this um, reservoir. So you do not have to put paint strainers in all these buckets. Just don't have to do it. Hope that helps. Thanks again, Steve Brahms. I'll put your link uh, back in the description here. Y'all go check him out. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.